From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Today is probably one of the most difficult programs that we have done for you and you'll understand why as we proceed into it. This first headline truly hurts my heart. 37 Muslim nations persecuting Christians. 37 nations. Going on. Tara Singh of slaughtering Jews and Christians. And Hip Church gives biblical, now that, that word's very important, Biblical Christians, new label, haters. Oh, my, I didn't think I'd ever read a headline like that. I said to our director, Jerry, did you ever see a headline like that? I think it boggled his mind also. But today's program, as I mentioned, is difficult because we're going to be dealing with some things that have to do with turning away from the Bible. It has nothing to do with denominations. When I first heard Jack speak, he came to my home church, a Baptist church, and whoa, he really gave a powerful, uh, powerful message. But he had combined crusades, many denominations, Presbyterian, Methodist, Lutherans, all the rest, combined together to see if they could reach a city for Christ. So it has nothing to do with denominations. But I'm going to ask him right up front here, is it right to confront something or someone, name names, who are changing the Bible? That's the important thing. We base our faith on the Bible, which expresses Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven. Is it right, Jack? Here's the most misunderstood verse in the Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 1, Judge not, lest you be judged. Oh, then you can never say anything about anyone. Wrong. Jesus here is talking about motives. Hey, he got up and said, I'm going to give $500 for the pews. He's just doing that to get a little praise. That's judging motives. Now, the same Jesus moves up to verse 15 and judges doctrinal error. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves to destroy. And what happens to them? Verses 21 to 23, still Jesus Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name I've cast out devils. In your name I've done many wonderful works. Then will I, Jesus, say unto them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you bunch of sinners. I never knew you. Now, he doesn't say that about those who are real. John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Why? They follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. They're real. They're genuine. And Rexella, there's so many instances. For instance, when one gets to Acts chapter 15 and onward, Paul and Barnabas are having great revivals as they join as a missionary team. But Barnabas brings his nephew Mark along and he backslides along the way. Later they want to get together again and says, I want my nephew. Paul said, no, the contention was so great between these two guys who had won so many souls that they did part. Again, 2 Timothy 4.10, Demas hath forsaken us having love this present world. And then in 2 Timothy 2.17, this is rich. Here is Hymenaeus and Philetus, and they've destroyed the lives of many people because they said the resurrection, the rapture is past already and overthrew the faith of many. It's wrong to judge a man on motives, but it's right to judge on his doctrinal errors. Let's go on. Oh, Jack, that is so powerful, but yeah. so biblical, isn't yes. it? You know, we need to keep focus on the Bible. All through this program, please. Now, Dr. Noah Hutchings wrote a very powerful book on this subject entitled The Dark Side of the Purpose-Driven Church. And there you see him, Dr. Noah Hutchings. 
And here is what he had to say. We're encouraged in that many Christians are being awakened to the apostate condition of what appears to be the majority of our nation's churches. Oh, do do Dr. Jack Van Impey using our book, The Dark Side of the Purpose Driven Church, and the related track, Is Your Church Going Purpose Driven? How can you tell? Approximately one million tracks have been requested. Thank the Lord for that. Well, here's another gentleman, Dr. David Wilkerson, and he responded to what uh, Dr. Hutchings had to say. Dear Dr. Hutchings, your article concerning Rick Warren's ministry is one of the most balanced exposés of what I see as a very dangerous movement. As I've traveled the world the last two years in ministers' conference, I've seen the havoc which that ministry has caused. Now, this dear Dr. David Wilkerson has gone home to be with the Lord, but he did travel around the world. Great ministry. Great Pentecostal and, leader. Yes, he was. And he used a word I'd like to ask Jack about. I have seen the havoc. Jack, can people become confused with this havoc that's being shown out there? Well, I'm going to show Rexella that one of the reasons that Rick Warren has caused so much confusion because he wants to honor the Muslims and get together with the Muslims, as we're going to see. And it all started when he interviewed McCain and Obama for the presidency. And he should have asked the right questions, but he didn't. And uh, as a result, we've got what we've got in our hands right now. Anyway, Rick Warren doesn't preach doctrine like he should. Now, God only wrote this book for one reason, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And you know, we got too many guys not preaching doctrine. There was one evangelist who said, I don't preach doctrine, I just preach Christ. You have to be a real Lulu to make that remark. But they say it. Why? Everything in this book is doctrine. When you talk about Jesus, it's Christology, the Father, theology, the Holy Spirit, pneumatology, salvation, soteriology, prophecy, eschatology, and on and on. We need to preach doctrine or we're going to get people in a mess like some of these ministers have done and are doing right now. Does God want that? 2 Timothy 4, 2-4. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears and lives from the truth, and they'll be turned unto fables. We got a lot of little fable tellers in the churches today with their little homilies and uh, nonsensical sermons that mount to nothing. Doctrine, the Word of God. And they even criticize those who preach verse by verse. That's what needs to be done in every church. And then you'll know your Bible, you'll know your doctrine, you won't try to get together with the Muslims. But what I was saying when he interviewed our President McCain, there were questions they should have asked. Do you believe in the born-again experience, John 3, 7? Do you believe that Jesus is the only way? For we've got to now have a president with us who told the people of the Chicago Sun-Times, there are many ways to heaven. That's why I know Obama's not saved, because you can't call Christ a liar and be saved. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man, no woman can come to the Father but by me. And when you say anything different, you're lost. For Jesus said, you die in your sins if you don't believe I am he, the Savior of the world. And that, of course, is also in John 8, 24. Now, when this man went to the inauguration of President Obama, he was trying to win the Muslim world. And he's been doing it ever since, as you're going to see. And he prayed at the end, not only in the Latin term, but he says, we pray this in the name of Isa. You know what's great about that? That's the name of the Jesus of the Muslims. And he knew that the Muslim world would be listening. And he was making his first hit. 
But Isa, as you're going to see today, is the Jesus of Islam who comes back and says, I lied to you and I've returned now as a convert of Allah. And I'm here to preach for him, and it's my duty to kill every Jew and Christian who will not turn to Allah because of my sermon, Isa, called Christ in our Bible. I'm going to prove that in a few minutes from now. Secondly, he went with one of his neighbors, a Syrian, to Syria. And while he was there, he held the hand of Assad high and said to the people of all the Middle East, this is the greatest leader here. Yeah, he's the one that has just witnessed 300,000 people being slaughtered, Muslims against Muslims. And even then, this man spoke against some of the standards and things that America has done. And I'll tell you, Jane Fonda got away with it, and you shouldn't. Well, you know, Jack, none of us should get away with it. We need to quote the Bible for exactly as God gave it to us and believe it exactly as God gave it to us. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Now, oddly enough, within American evangelism and media circles, there's a concept that has emerged, a term. And it has to do with conservative Christians. Hip Church gives biblical Christians a new label. Hater. Oh, dear. Hater. That is so very, very untrue. Because those who believe the Bible have love for each other. They have love for those who don't believe what they're saying. Love, not haters, Jack. Isn't that true? Yeah, but let me explain that. This guy, Reverend Furtick of North Carolina, says my mentors are Rick Warren and Bill Hybels. And lo and behold, he said, I'm encouraged by what they've taught because it's not all this stodgy doctrine and singing, the old word across the rest. Uh, that's moved out of the way. Now we're at the hip church. And God forgive us for the hip church where they sing their a little songs of nonsense. One guy wrote to me and said, what should I do here in Florida? My pastor is now using Lady Gaga for the morning service to get us stirred up. And then we drink our lattes and a lot of nonsense and a sermonette that makes Christianettes. And we come out saying, oh, bless the Lord. I just worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. No, you didn't. You. A lot of nonsense. And the trouble with Rick Warren and the rest of these guys is they're not doing it with doctrine like I've already said. God wants doctrine. And Romans 16 and 17 he says, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to doctrine and avoid them. Amen. Let's go on because we're going to get into the five doctrines that the right. le leader of the World Net Daily says, this guy, Warren, has almost crossed the steps into oh, heresy. Okay, we'll go on here. And, and I would like to see what uh, they are promoting, if you will, please. I'm going to put this next picture on the screen. We've used it many, many, many times, but please be careful of this, how missionaries are promoting an Islamized gospel, and they call it Chrislam, combining Christianity and the Islamic faith. And uh, here you see the gentleman that Jack referred to a moment ago, Rick Warren, speaks at the Islamic Society of North America Convention. Now, that was July 2009. He was invited back a second time. And this is the gentleman that invited him to come, the, the chairman of the Islamic Supreme Council of America, Mohammed Kabani. And look at what he has to say. We see that the Mahdi will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of who? Islam. The Mahdi will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. Now, this breaks my heart. Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mahdi, and Islam will be victorious over all the religions. Does that break your heart like it does mine that Jesus would be the executioner of the Jews and Christians? Oh, my, oh, my. The Jesus of the Islamic faith is not the Jesus of the Christian faith. And, Jack, explain it thoroughly, if you will, please. Well, it's very simple. You just read it, and this is the guy that heads up the movement of Islam in America and 
Rick Warren's right in there with him, uh, with the conventions, and now he has at his church uh, meetings with their clergy, his clergy, to find all the similarities. Well, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It was true that Muhammad could not read or write at the time, and the Jews gave him the Old Testament stories, and he remembered that, so there are similarities there. But when it comes to the New Testament, it's totally different. Now, what does the Quran really teach about Jesus and this same Kabani who fellowships with Rick Warren, has had him speak at two conventions, also said when Jesus returns, he's going to correct all the misrepresentations and misinterpretations of him in the Bible. There's nothing to correct, Mr. Kabani. Why? Here is what your Quran says all in opposition to the Bible. Rick, next time you get together with that crowd, show them the dissimilarities. Jesus comes back and he said, I lied to you. I'm not the Son of God. I did not die on a cross. Someone took my place. It was all rigged. Not only that, but when I return, I will tell the world I have become a Muslim. I've been converted. I am now the preacher and evangelist for Allah. And it is my job to put to death every Jew and Christian, plus the others who are infidels, because they will not accept my message of convert or die toward and to Allah. That's what they teach. I hold here the Quran dilemma by converted Muslims, and I've memorized 300 verses as I've said. And this proves what I just said about Christ. Surah chapter 4, verses 157 to 59, verses 172 and 73, chapter 5, verses 72 and 73, chapter 6, verse 19, chapter 9, verse 30, and chapter 19, verses 33 and 88. There's where all the blasphemy is found against our precious Jesus, our God, the Son of God and the one who's coming to rule and reign over the world. Mm, you know, Jack, that is the blessed hope of every believer. But while we're here on earth, we've got to watch exactly how we stand on the Word of God. I'd like you to see something from World Net Daily. Joseph Farah, he's the editor-in-chief and chairman and CEO of that group. And now here's what he had to say. I've had a number of issues with Rick Warren over the years. But with his latest effort to find common whoa, theological ground with Muslims and suggesting Christians and Muslims worship the same God. The man dubbed America's pastor by the secular media is getting very close to heresy, if not crossing the line. Well, here's something that you must see. Yale Center for Faith and Culture, a common word, Christian response. Jack, would you like to read this, please? It is dynamite. This is called the Yale Covenant. 300 leaders of the world signed it, majority of them Christians, and they apologized to the Muslims for the Crusades and everything else, took them by the hand and said the following, abandoning all hatred and strife. We must engage in interfaith dialogue as those who seek each other's good, for the one God unceasingly seeks our good, and that one God is the common word, Allah, and Rick Warren signed it, as well as Schuler of the Crystal Cathedral. Ladies and gentlemen, our God says there's only one, and he is the one. And that is the first commandment, Exodus 20, verse 3, Rick. The Bible, and it's God speaking, says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he means what he says. In Deuteronomy 11, verses 26 and 27, God says, I've set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day to go out after other gods which you have not known. There it is. Mm, amen, Jack. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, no. We need to put our faith and trust in the Son of God, Jesus, our blessed Savior. And now, our wonderful new offer of the week, and it is Beware False Prophets. Take a look, please, at the commercial. 
Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrists, and super deceivers, like Judas, who for the almighty dollar delivered Christ to the enemies of the gospel. That hour has arrived. Bible translators remove 91 verses claiming Christ is the Son of God from the Holy Bible for decadent versions created for Muslims. Does it matter? Shockingly so. Why? Christianity's foundation and major theological voids have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. This same group of blasphemers have obliterated the major Bible doctrines for salvation, including the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his sacrificial blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his second coming. Who are these Judas Iscariots? Have they committed the unpardonable sin against Christ and the Holy Spirit? Order Dr. Van Ampe's shocking video, Beware False Prophets, Damnable Heresies, and Doctrines of Demons, and find out. Oh yes, there's the 800 number and there's the address. And I like that first word, beware. We need to be cautious about the false prophets out there. And Jack, you have something to say about something we're going to enclose with your order. And when you order this video, I'm going to send you another specially created video that took place at the Washington National Cathedral when they invited the Muslims to come and use their building for prayer. And they said, before we do, you have to turn our backs to the cross of Jesus because our God will not enter prayers if we are connected with an alien religion. What gratefulness. Get it. Oh, my, oh, my. You must have that. We will enclose that with your order. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. So if ever you needed one of our videos, this is it. Christianity's foundation and doctrinal points have been destroyed. Oh, my, oh, my. Beware, false prophets. Make the call. Now, you know what, friends? Here's the group to which Rick Warren is trying to combine Christianity. Take a look at this from the National Post. Convert to Islam or face the sword. Now, this was in Syria. Al Qaeda linked jihadists accused of hanging victims on crosses. Oh, my. New Alliance from Hell. Boko Haram and ISIS. 37 Muslim nations persecuting Christians. Jihadist massacre in Kenya. I'll never forget that one. Taliban massacre students in nine-hour rampage at school. Never forget that either. And then going on public beheadings are the only form of public entertainment in Saudi Arabia aside from football matches. I never God, thought I'd ever them. seen it like that. And then tourists sing of slaughtering Jews and Christians. Boko Haram leader. Allah says I should sell kidnapped girls as slaves. Allah says it. Number of displaced people hits 50 million highest since World War II. And then here's something by Ben Carson. Thank you so much for this article from the Detroit News. Get ugly with Islamic militants. And you know, Jack, I'd like for you to wrap this together because certainly they're aggressive. They say we want to take over the world and we'll do it by n any means possible, even killing Christians. Oh, Rexella, last week we covered the fact that they marched into this f French store where they publish magazines and they killed 12 people and everybody around us was so worried. Oh, this is horrible. You know, the week before they went into Pakistan military office and there were 136 children there who were the children of military men who were fighting ISIS and guess what they did? This was Al-Qaeda. So you got 47 groups murdering and killing everybody. 47 different groups, not just ISIS. And they say, oh, it's just ISIS. The rest of us are not like that. Baloney. Now listen, they took nine hours and they put a bullet in every child's head, making all the other ones watch as they died. It took nine hours for this savagery. And we're trying to join them all together, Rick. Oh, my, oh, my. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. How good it is to follow 
the Ten Commandments given from God. How good it is to know that we can be forgiven if we will trust in the Lord God's Son, Jesus Christ. He died for you. He died for me. Oh, how good it is to be forgiven of our sins. Will you open your heart to Jesus, the Son of God, Savior of the world, as Jack prays this wonderful prayer of salvation. Jack. Precious Jesus, I believe what the Bible says about you, not what ism says. And I love you, Jesus, for coming into the world, taking a body with blood, because it's the blood that cleanses us from all sin when we ask you to save us. And Jesus, I believe that. And now, because of what you did for me in shedding that precious, holy blood, I receive you as my personal Savior. I want to be with you someday. Come into my heart now, Jesus, save me. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? You know, in this day and age in which we're living, so many of us are hooked on something. We're hooked on drugs or on alcohol or on illicit sex. How good it is to know that the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. He just forgave you because he is the savior of the world. Did you open your heart to him and prayed that prayer? If you did, there's my address. Please write to me. I'd love to send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord wants to walk with you in a new direction. How good it is to have the Lord by our side, guiding us every moment of every day. God bless you as you walk with Him. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful new offer of the week. Beware false prophets. You know, they're out there. How good it is to beware of them, not go along with them. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Heller, my friend, to order Beware False Prophets. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you again. There's the 800 number and there's the address. Don't put it off. Make the phone call and we'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Please call. You really need it. Let me just say this, friends, as we're entering in the new year. The best way to break a bad habit, to break it, just drop it. How good it is to drop our bad habits and walk with the Lord. Look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye, friends.